The defense headquarters of Abuja has indicated that 603 former Boko Haram fighters will be reintegrated to their communities by June 2020. After undergoing Operation Safe Corridors, the de-radicalization, rehabilitation and reintegration, the DHQ's defense media operation stated these at a press conference on Friday. It noted that through the same safe corridor, 280 clients have successfully undergone the program and reintegrated into the society, while 25 of this number were repatriated to the Nigeria Republic. Joining us live in the studio is Dixon Osage, a security expert, to shed more lights on this. Now, the federal government, through the Nigerian army, is considering integrating this repentant Boko Haram members back, not just into the community now, and a possibility into the Nigerian army. Your quick thoughts on this? Uh, well, it's uh, devastating uh, because uh, these were the guys that uh, placed us on, uh, on a third position in the global uh, terrorism index, according to uh, uh, statistics. And uh, after placing us in that position, they made us uh, the 15th most dangerous country in the world and uh, 143 uh, most peaceful nation in the world, you know. They made us uh, uh, perform so negatively wise, you know. Uh, but for me, my reaction to this is that um, the military or the government are trying to, like, uh, uh, recycle danger into the society. Uh, because guys who has this kind of ideology, uh, the ideology to kill, maim, destroy, uh, made a lot of widows. We go to most of our military base now, we have thousands of widows, and uh, some people lost their brothers in action. Even when I heard about it, I remember when my younger brother was shot in Chibok during the rescue of those Chibok girls, uh, though he survived the gunshot. And I just uh, have a flashback that peradventure he died in action. So these guys that killed my brother will be uh, given uh, the opportunity to be integrated in society. And that is uh, an intentional error by the government. Now, some Nigerians don't seem to understand why this set of people are given, it seems like a preferential kind of treatment, given the amount of harm they've, they've inflicted on innocent people, victims in the country. Now, why do you think, is, is this, is this judged by international standard, is this, is this acceptable? Oh, well, for me, I, I don't think this is an acceptable uh, process uh, in reintegrating a, a terrorist. Uh, these guys are not just, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 property criminals. They are violent criminals, you know, uh, because violent criminals, uh, to the extent that they are also extremists, uh, religious extremists, uh, they are driven by ideology. And uh, anyone who is driven by ideology, <laughs> it takes uh, it could take till eternity for you to uh, reformat his uh, thinking faculty. Uh, I think uh, for me, the military should be very careful uh, because if they reintegrate these guys back to society, I really don't have a 100% problem with that, but I'm worried about that uh, because we'll be projecting 603 uh, evil characters uh, to the society, even if they've repented. Uh, well, I don't know the, uh, uh, the, the measurement of their repentance. Uh, so for me, if they come back to the military, the military will suffer a human intelligence source, uh, human intelligence source in the sense that uh, uh, the Boko Haram elements might, they might still be contacting their friends. Uh, Benny Ag, let me give you a scenario, for example. I, I joined the Nigerian Army uh, 23 years ago, and uh, I voluntarily resigned uh, so some, uh, some many years ago as well. Uh, each time I'm driving around and I see some military guys on the express road, I, I stop to pick these guys and take them uh, to their destination. Why? Because I was once a soldier, and I remain a soldier. And that is the mentality, the driven mentality, you know, the state mentality to protect the states. Uh, now, come to the ideological aspect of the terrorists, you know. You know, once a terrorist, is always a terrorist, you know. He will, whenever he sees his fellow brother uh, perpetrating an uh, evil act against the state, I think uh, he might have mercy. Uh, for those guys because he's driven by ideology. Now, do you think that there might likely be a boomerang and the, the government regretting this move? Is there a possibility of a boomerang? Oh, sure. The government is going to regret it because, first of all, uh, most of the soldiers in the front line, are, they are not happy. Uh, I read a chat some few days back, and uh, one, of, one of the guys were saying that, well, uh, his friend was killed, his brother was killed, uh, his colleagues were killed in action, and the people who killed these uh, guys are being reintegrated. So what is the essence of being in the front line? You understand? So the military must also look into the psychological and intelligence aspect of this operation because uh, the operation failed uh, psychological-wise, psychological-wise in the sense that uh, our soldiers, uh, high command has projected our soldiers in the front line, exposed them to danger for three, four years. Because when you put a soldier in the front line for about three to four years, that's a psychological failure. Uh, because the, 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 the morale uh, gets to a level and it depreciates. You understand? You cannot fight till eternity. So that is the psychological aspect. Then the intelligence aspect is that uh, these guys might be guarding intelligence for the enemy. And if you have people projected into the society to source intelligence against you, uh, you will not be safe. Dixon Osage, security expert, thank you for joining thank us you. on the news. Thank you.